The weather is about to change a ton over the next few days as we are expecting an entirely different weather pattern as we approach the 4th of July with record breaking temperatures continuing, severe weather making a return and the potential for a tropical storm near Florida over the next few days. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we've actually had a pretty quiet stretch of weather here over the last 24 hours. A lot of our severe weather that we saw yesterday was along the east coast and that is now mall moving out and honestly today is one of the best days of the week when it comes to the weather really not a whole lot of severe weather in the forecast today but that'll change as we go into tomorrow as we are expecting a new storm system to move over the rockies and just in time for the fourth of july we are expecting the return of severe weather which could be significant at times across parts of the northern and central plains back into the midwest might even see some storms over into the ohio valley for the big holiday and then back over in the gulf right now we do have a little area that we are are keeping an eye on there's currently a 40 percent chance of development of a tropical storm here over the next five to seven days this will actually be me meandering around western florida for the next day or two bringing heavy rainfall and then as we go into friday and saturday this will make its way over into florida and then eventually move into the atlantic ocean where it may become a tropical depression or storm so something we are keeping a very close eye on because if this does form it'll bring heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding maybe even some localized storm surge and on top of that it would be our third name storm of the atlantic hurricane season Season thus far. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven to 10 days. And to look at that, we are going to look at our mid-level flow, which is near our jet stream. And currently we have a large ridge that is in place across the Great Plains. This is keeping things relatively warmer and drier for the most part. And then back off to the west and north, that is where our jet stream and our mid-level flow is currently located. So there's really no big organized storm systems anywhere in the lower 48, either today or tomorrow. But as we go to late tomorrow and into Friday, we are expecting a shortwave trough to move and form over the Rockies. This is going to be the return of some severe weather for those in the northern and central plains and back into the upper Midwest as we go into both Thursday and Friday with damaging winds, hail, and a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. So this is something we are keeping an eye on, but I think really what's going to be more notable is what's happening after the 4th of July because our jet stream is going to continue to be favorable for multiple storm systems across the northern plains and the Midwest with the potential for multiple severe weather events, I think, all the way into the middle of July. Notice how our jet stream continues to remain far off to the north but we continue to see these big storm systems and this would allow for the potential for some big severe weather events especially back over in the midwest and the northern plains the other thing i want to point out is that if indeed we do see a ridge build over in the pacific southwest as we go into the middle of july so closer to july 13th or so we may start to see northwesterly flow which would be more favorable for the potential for damaging wind events including lines of thunderstorms and even in some cases we can get derechos back on july 15th of last year we had a big derecho form across the Midwest and it could get some we could see something similar like that here over the next couple of weeks if we're able to get westerly or northwesterly flow with a low pressure system centered off to the north as the GFS model is currently showing around July 13th so to put this into more simplistic terms let's check out the future radar here over the next couple of weeks beginning with what's happening today and tomorrow we're going to continue to stay active in the southern plains and back into the southeast one thing I want to point out is that we have a lot of moisture coming out of Pacific Ocean which is actually helping to bring some showers and thunderstorms to Texas and Oklahoma over the the next 48 hours that is actually from a hurricane that is currently in the eastern pacific which will not really be impacting the united states but nonetheless is bringing moisture into the southern plains as we go into late thursday and friday we are expecting the return of severe weather across the central and northern plains and we'll talk more about that here in a moment on friday i do think we're going to be seeing scattered to numerous severe weather across areas like central uh, dakota back all the way even into northern minnesota with damaging winds and hail being a possibility we're at least going to be seeing numerous storms the severe weather threat is contingent on how much wind shear we're going to have doesn't look like we're going to have a lot but if that wind shear is able to increase as we get closer if it's forecast to be higher we might be talking about a bit more of a numerous severe weather event there by saturday we're going to be keeping an eye on the tropics as we'll have a little weak low pressure system trying to form back over in florida on saturday and sunday again that could become our next tropical depression or storm and then as we go into late sunday into monday some scattered showers and thunderstorms will be possible in the ohio valley isolated severe weather being a possibility but by no means are we looking at anything widespread on Monday and Tuesday of next week is when I think severe weather will make a return to the northern plains in the Midwest. We may end up seeing a more significant severe weather event in these areas with damaging winds being the biggest concern with how our jet stream will be positioned. And then eventually as we go into the middle and end of next week, that's when things start to become a lot more uncertain. But I do think we're going to continue to see that active weather pattern ramp back up again back over in the central and northern plains and the Midwest as we get closer to the middle of July. So right now over the next seven days or so, I would say our weather is going to be at least somewhat quiet 
wider than what we had over the last 10 to 14 days. But I do think as we get closer to the middle of July, we are going to see that active weather pattern return. But honestly, having at least somewhat quieter weather here right around the 4th of July is a big plus because I know a lot of you are going to be traveling and a lot of people are going to have outdoor plans here over the next five to seven days. And at least it looks like for a lot of us, we're going to have a nice 4th of July. Unfortunately, I do think those central and northern plains, we may have some issues. And if you have fireworks shows or anything like that go ongoing, there definitely could be some problems with the storms that'll be ongoing that evening. Something that is very notable as well over the next seven days is that we are going to be seeing a heat wave as we go into the 4th of July across the northern plains and the Midwest with record breaking high temperatures being a possibility. So be ready for that if you're back over in the northern plains or even back through the Great Lakes as we go into the end of this weekend as well as into the weekend. By early next week, we're going to start to see the weather start to kind of take a chill pill, I would say. We're not going to be talking about any sort of record breaking heat waves east of the Rockies. Unfortunately, though, west of the Rockies, we're going to be dealing with record breaking high temperatures. So again, there's really no end in sight for the record breaking temperatures. It's just going to be shifting further back off to the west while temperatures will be a little bit closer to normal east of the Rockies by the middle of next week. And then eventually by next weekend, that warm weather is just going to continue back along the west coast. No end in sight to the potential for a long stretch of record breaking highs back over around and just to the west of the Rockies. These are our high temperatures that are currently forecasted for July 4th. And right now we are expecting record breaking high potential back over in the northern plains where parts of North and South Dakota could be in the mid to upper 90s and then back over towards the Gulf Coast and even in Texas we're actually gonna be somewhat around if not below average for a lot of areas in the southern plains on the 4th of July that's really good news there but look at the Pacific Northwest many areas touching 90 degrees on the 4th of July here are your low temperatures for July 4th as well so again 70s across the board in the Great Plains and the Midwest back over along the West Coast most areas in the 40s and 50s and the Northeast most of you guys will be in the 50s for the 4th of July morning and as we've talked about a few few times now the tropics are heating up we now have a 40 percent chance of a tropical depression or storm forming in the atlantic ocean over the next five to seven days i do think if we see a tropical depression or storm form it'll probably happen sometime over the weekend if not very early next week this is the area to keep an eye on back over in florida and up and down the east coast i really think the biggest concern if anything does develop here will likely just be heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding we may have some minor storm surge but a hurricane forming or anything beyond that does appear unlikely at this time and this is the probabilities of a tropical depression forming over the next five to seven days. And you'll notice that the probabilities are actually relatively high, about a 60 to 70 percent chance of development back over in the far western Atlantic Ocean, just off the coast of the Carolinas, Georgia and Florida. But overall, the chances of a tropical storm or even anything beyond that forming is fairly low. It's about a 10 to 20 percent chance in general. So I don't think we're really talking about anything major here, but this is definitely something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And obviously, hurricane season is going to start to ramp up as we go later into July. So definitely have your hurricane prepared preparedness tools and everything like that ready to go as we are expecting another very active hurricane season. This should not be a big event, but it is something we are keeping an eye on in case it does take a big turn. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Wednesday, and we have three different marginal threats of severe weather in place, one of which is across the Midwest. We got another one across Montana with also a slight risk in place and another marginal threat back over in the Southwest. Biggest concerns today will be damaging winds, which will be scattered at times, mainly in Montana. Large hail will also be a concern across the Midwest, but no tornado risk in place today. I'm not really expecting any tornadoes today. Just stay weather aware and have multiple ways to receive alerts. As we go into July 3rd, the day right before the 4th of July, we are expecting more severe weather, mainly in the Northern Plains, another small li little risk over in the Midwest, and then also back into the Northeast, where we even have a slight risk in place back over in Southern New England, right around New York City, where the greatest concern on Thursday will be damaging winds, which will be scattered to numerous at times, especially in the Northern Plains. Large to very large hail is a possibility also across North Dakota, and there's also a low chance for an isolated tornado or two in western North Dakota, net back over near Bismarck, so stay weather aware and have ways to receive warnings. There's a low chance of a live stream tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. On Friday, the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal threat in place across the upper Midwest. I do think this will likely grow in size as we get closer to the 4th of July. Wouldn't be surprised if that marginal threat goes all the way back down into the Central Plains. Might even see a slight risk introduced in a future outlook, depending on the the amount of wind shear that we have in place but generally speaking the biggest concern on friday will be damaging winds hail the potential for frequent lightning as well so again stay weather aware and have ways to receive warnings as there could be some storms out there even while fireworks are going off if thunder roars go indoors now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather beginning with tomorrow across the northeast where we are expecting scattered storms to fire up during the mid to late afternoon hours right around four to five o'clock there will be pretty much scattered to numerous storms anywhere from northern pennsylvania back into northern new england with damaging winds and hail being the main concern and then these will fizzle out as we go into the 
evening hours. But overall, we're expecting some storms out here. There will be some lightning. So if you have any outdoor plans, definitely be staying weather aware. Back over in the Midwest, we're also expecting a few storms tonight to produce some large hail in northern Wisconsin, in the upper peninsula of Michigan, just to the north and west there of Green Bay. That'll continue through about 2 to 3 in the morning tonight. And then by tomorrow, a few more storms will fire up in eastern Iowa and western Illinois with isolated damaging winds and hail being a possibility out of the strongest storms. And then during the evening, more storms are likely going to fire up between the Twin Cities and southwestern Wisconsin with damaging winds and large hail being a possibility. And then as we go into Friday morning, there will still be some scattered showers out there, so that might make things a little bit more moist across the Midwest to begin 4th of July. And then back over in the Northern Plains on Thursday, we are expecting a few storms to fire off across western North Dakota. These will be mainly large hail and damaging wind producers, but if they do stay discreet, which right now the HRRR model is showing, I do think a tornado or two will be possible just outside or west there of Bismarck during the late afternoon. By around 8 to 9 o'clock, these storms continue with damaging winds and hail, and it may become a cluster as we go into the mid to late evening hours, which may promote a more elevated damaging wind threat across southern North Dakota. And as we go into Friday morning, those storms will move into northern Minnesota, which will eventually lead to our next risk of severe weather, which is right on the 4th of July, where we are expecting a bunch of storms to fire off between 4 and 8 o'clock. They'll begin in northern uh, North Dakota and also back into northern Minnesota, and there will also be plenty of storms back as far south as northern Kansas, with damaging winds and large hail being a possibility. If any storm can stay discreet, we may see an isolated tornado, but overall, I'm not expecting the tornado threat to be very high on the 4th of July. I think across the board, damaging winds, frequent lightning, and large hail will be the biggest concerns out of those storms. And then Saturday morning, showers and storms will continue into the Midwest. May see a low-end threat of severe weather also exist back over near Chicago on Saturday. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely not have a video tomorrow. Our next video should be on Friday, so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. Doesn't appear as if we'll have many live streams over the next five to seven days, but there is a low chance of a live stream tomorrow and Friday, so stay tuned for that. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.